Looking for a password manager? NordPass safely stores all your passwords and helps you generate new ones. The autofill feature saves you time when logging in and synchronizes across all your devices. Visit nordpass.com forward slash legendvd to get the best offer or use code legendvd at checkout to get an additional month for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white party deck featuring Nalia, the 3-mana three 3-3 three, three human rogue, saying we may look at the top card of our library at any time and cast Cleric, Rogue, Warrior and Wizard spells from the top of our library. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, meaning we control a Cleric, Rogue, Warrior and Wizard at the same time, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and those creatures also gain death touch until end of turn. So Nalia is definitely our MVP and it's all about trying to get four creature types in play and then Nalia will essentially do the rest both pumping our team and providing a ton of card advantage off the top. So our deck is almost entirely built out of creatures and we have them all sorted according to their types here starting out with our clerics where Archpriest is another nice party payoff and then we just want some very cheap clerics if possible so Chaplain not particularly impressive but first strike does pair well with Death Touch. Escort can protect our key creature once they get a plus one counter, then Aspirant, even the nerfed version, still good enough. Angel of Unity, another one of these alchemy cards that plays particularly well in a party deck. Clement, a new addition with Specialize. I know some of these cards are going to be a bit controversial as they're from alchemy, but Clement fits the deck perfectly as it will pump creatures in our hand, and then we don't even have to use the Specialize ability for it to be good. We've got the Evangel, can tap stuff down when it enters, so it can get some blockers out of the way. Blood Priest, another great party payoff, as it can drain the opponent. Silencer can name the opponent's commander, so they'll have to remove it. Otherwise, we get to draw a card and drain the opponent for three. We've got Spellbinder to have a look, maybe take away some sweeper effects. Overseer gets to draw, so another good card in general. And then Glyphweaver can protect the team if we sacrifice it. We've got the Inquisitor Captain as just a nice value for drop. And then Mikaeus also especially synergistic with the plus one counters from Nalia, as we can essentially remove one counter from Mikaeus to pump the rest of the team. Then we don't have a ton of rogues, and that's on purpose because our commander is a rogue, so we don't need a ton of them to complete our party. So we just have Acquisitions Expert to maybe take a look at the opponent's hand, especially once we have a full party, can almost look at their entire hand to make them discard. We've got the Prowler as just a good 2-1 death touch that will often draw a card when it dies. Then Una's Blackguard can make the opponent discard cards if we hit them with creatures with plus one counters on them, so they can even be non-rogue creatures. Extraction Specialist can bring back one of our creatures with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard into play, so great with any ETB effects especially, and can also help us re-establish a full party after a board wipe. Then Mage's Attendant also gets two of the four types right away by making a 1-1 wizard token, and the Opportunist can also draw more cards if creatures die. Then the next category is Warriors, where we have Cartouche of Solidarity, not a creature, so we wouldn't be able to play it off the top with our commander, but does give our creature first strike, which again pairs quite nicely with Death Touch. We've got the Moth Rider Patrol as a 1-1 flyer, Banneret can maybe pump the team, Usher of the Fallen a 2-1 that can boast to make more tokens, Got the Contender as a 1-1 that can essentially attack for 2 if we pump it. And then Gutter Bones another 2-1 for 1 mana. At 2 mana we've got the Glory Bound Initiate. Can exert to get plus 1 plus 3 and lifelink until end of turn. Lightwalker gains flying as long as it has a plus 1 counter which we can accomplish pretty easily. Hallowblade is perfect as it has a bit of built-in protection. So is Sweeper Proof. We've got the Twin Blade Geist with Double Strike. Also pairs quite nicely with those extra plus 1 counters. Skeleton can come back from the graveyard so we don't need to worry about it dying then the underdog can also get more value with blitz we've got Oketra's monument which can discount all our white creature spells and then whenever we cast a creature spell we get to make a 1-1 white warrior creature token with vigilance and then we've got another new addition from Baldur's Gate a 2-4 with a double strike and specialize that has a bit of built-in protection if the opponent tries and target it and then a squad commander another one of our party payoff cards making a bunch of warrior tokens when it enters and giving the team plus one plus two and indestructible until end of turn and then the final category is Wizards, where we have Star Pupil, we've got the Awakener, not planning to sacrifice many creatures, just need a cheap wizard to fill out our party. Gustwalker can exert to get plus one plus one and flying. We've got the Informant to maybe loot thanks to Connive. Orator is actually pretty good as we do tend to have quite a few keywords between Death Touch, Flying, Double Strike, maybe even Indestructible. Then Asylum Visitor can maybe draw a few extra cards. We've got Jodar making a zombie token. 
that the Bloodcaster can make blood tokens if creatures die, and then the Sunscorch Champion. So as you can see, some of these creatures are a bit questionable if you look at them individually, but once you get all four types in play, it doesn't really matter how powerful some of these creatures are. And then our most important category, arguably, is actually the Changeling Department, where we have some creatures that have all creature types, so they can help us fill out our party for maybe missing one type. So the Changeling Outcast at one mana is perfect as a Changeling that cannot be blocked and cannot block, which we don't care about as we're an aggro deck. We've got the Automaton as another 1-1 Changeling. Stonework Pack Beast, not quite a Changeling, but essentially does the same. Then Connections, another new addition from Baldur's Gate that's perfect in this deck, as it can generate treasure tokens, draw cards, and generate Shapeshifter tokens with Changeling at the cost of a bit of life. And since we're usually the aggressor, we don't really mind paying a bit of life to get all these effects. And then Faceless Agent, another good one, and a regular cohort, perfect as well, as it will make two changelings with one card, so it can easily help us fill out our party. And then we have a bit of cheap removal with Curse of Silence to nerf the opponent's commander, making it too more expensive. Humiliation is another new addition that's quite powerful in a creature deck where we can go wide, deal quite a bit of damage, and also take out any opposing abilities. Source to Plowshares. We've got a Journey to Oblivion, can often be cast for one mana, and same goes with a Deadly Alliance if we have a full party. And then stick together a nice sweeper in any party deck, as we can keep a full party and maybe the opponent will have to sacrifice their entire board. And then we also have Arcane Signet for ramp. Coveted Prize as potentially a 1-mana tutor to find one of our key creatures, can maybe find like a squad commander for 1-mana to pump the team. And then Thwart a Grave can also maybe bring back a few creatures from the graveyard for just a double black if we have a full party going. And then the mana base, pretty simple, just a lot of mana fixing. I did not include too many creature lands, which is an option, but for the most part we want to have untapped lands so we can make use of our commander's ability and cast more creatures off the top, which is what this deck is all about. To have a few channel lands with Iganjo and and the Abandoned Mire, and then Castle for maybe a bit of extra card advantage, but then for the most part just a lot of dual lands, preferably that come into play untapped. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Raga Draga, so yeah, we're gonna be up against a pretty fast deck, and our hand has a Wizard, a Cleric, so we're just missing either a Warrior or maybe some other creature that has all creature types. Thwart a Grave, probably not going to be at its best here, since I don't expect the opponent to kill many of my creatures. So this hand's good, but it does need kind of the final piece to uh, make it work. So we'll try it. Turn 1 Awakener, not going to be sacrificing much to it. And a turn 1 Elves is scary. Okay, play Angel... And hit for one, don't think our opponent's trading. And then we've got another cleric here. Let's get our commander down so we can maybe start playing creatures off the top. And then we can pump up our flyer even more. That's probably our easiest route to victory is with our flyers. Raga Draga lets the Paradise Root attack, we'll take it. And uh, Journey to Oblivion is not bad. So, won't quite be able to play it here since our lands come into play tapped. But, um, still happy to keep it on top as opposed to scrying it to the bottom with Crossroads. And a Godless Shrine coming up next. So, can play a tapped crossroads, and then next turn, the Snarl can come into play untapped if we reveal a Godless Shrine. Which would be a fine draw. So yeah, we'll keep it on top. And then Flyer can attack. And hope to find a Warrior soon. Red and Seven can make a large reach creature. Can take it out with Journey. Could also trade Inspiring Overseer for the opponent's commander here. Make them replay it. Or trade for Paradise Druid. That way we can Journey the token and finish off Renan 7. Kind of like that more. Okay, 
another land on top. Okay, play the Snarl. And then we can journey for two mana. And then still play Mikaos for X equals two. So let's do that. And then these two at Ren. This can go face. And we can always thwart a grave just to get our Overseer back. Zorn to double treasures. Not too many treasure makers in play. And there's our pack beast to complete our party at long last. There we go. And then we can move to combats. And smash. Mikaos can pump the team some more. Gain a ton of life back. And can play this tapped. Also don't really mind casting Thor to Grave just to get back Overseer. And see if there's maybe a creature on top we can cast. There's not. And at 21, feel relatively safe, but opponent could of course cast some uh, expensive spell. Like maybe an exponential growth with a last ability and kill us out of nowhere. Gonna be an old Gnawbone and an 11 powered Raga Draga with Trample, which would make 11 treasure plus one more from Zorn, I guess. So I don't think it's really worth it to chump to prevent them from generating treasure in the first place. So we'll see what else they have and hope there's no big burn spell to finish us off. And the Brontodon. Okay. Pumps Gnawbone. Opponent passes. And we can play some creatures off the top if we'd like. No creatures to get back with specialists. Can go for Spellbinder. Take a look at the last card. Just a land. So opponent has three blockers. And if we just attack with a team, I think they're dead. And there we have it, sweet, so took a while to get our full party, but once we did, our deck looked incredibly scary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a nice changeling, cleric, wizard, another cleric, so yeah, we could have a full party here on turn four. So we'll give this a shot. And then probably lead with a wizard, maybe. Save the outcasts in case of removal for later, as it's more valuable, as it can fill out our party nicely. And then we could play Turn to Expert, although it is another rogue, which we don't necessarily need if we're about to play our commander. Rampage kills our one drop, although we can now get it back. So I guess we'll double spell. And then next turn, Specialist getting back Star Pupil would have a full party already. Although no benefits right away. Magda plus Kalein, nice combo. And a Pack Beast as well. So, do I want to play my commander already or do we maybe wait on it? Get the Specialist down. Or maybe Acquisitions Expert, although only get to take a look at three cards, so not quite all of them. The Glyph Weaver is also an option to protect our team, although it is another Cleric. So going Specialist, get back Pupil seems decent. And then Outcast gets to attack. And then I'm okay if the Specialist trades, since we have another Rogue incoming. And then we might want to have a look with Expert before playing our Commander, just to make sure the coast is clear. Although Glyph Weaver for protection is another option as well. Magda attacks. I'll trade. Don't want Magda getting out of hand. And now the pupil can attack again. 
Ooh, a Blood Vile Purveyor with an extra counter, so that's very large and scary, but Journey, the perfect answer. And now I'm kind of liking Experts, and then Journey for one mana. We'll have a full party, make some Blood Tokens as well, and see what they're working with. So they just have some very large creatures, some Haste Enablers, which also makes sense. Two damage to each creature. That's probably the biggest problem here. Although if we take it, our opponent could use Olivia to eventually reanimate it, but that's pretty far away. So, yeah, I think taking Balor makes sense. Although, just going for Stormseeker as the only spell they can actually cast is also an option. Get rid of Purveyor. Attack for one. And then next turn, full party with no removal in sight. Opponent can hit us for a little bit of damage here. Opponent can hit us for three. And we're not gonna mess around. Player Commander. Overseer on top. Attack with all. And this is gonna be a very fast clock. Valkyrie, not a bad one. 4-3 Flying Lifelink. It's gonna attack for five thanks to the Stormseeker. Can play a Ghostwalker for free, or we can get a Glyph Weaver in play if we'd like. Kind of like playing stuff for free first. And then we can give something first strike. Although our team's gonna get pumped anyway, so it doesn't really make a huge difference. Tank with all. Opponent just takes it all. Falls to two. And I don't think they're coming back from this. Unless they top decked some sort of sweeper. Which was maybe a reason to get a Glyph Weaver in play, but just seems like our opponent was on a different game plan altogether. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Teamer Dragons deck. And what do we think of our hand? We've got Clerics, Warrior, Wizard. So yeah, we have a complete party, just need to hit a few land drops. And then turn one, Escort. Turn two, kind of want to play Clements. While well, we still have a bunch of creatures in hand, although it wouldn't be adding any extra creature type to the battlefield. Probably still acceptable. And then hopefully our opponent doesn't pack too many sweepers here to disrupt our game plan. Just a Paradise Druid for ramp. Play Clements. Attack for one. Then next turn we could already play our commander if we'd like. And then turn four. We need to add a wizard and a warrior to the battlefield, so orator plus initiate would do it. Although still need a land to come into play untapped, as castle currently is missing a swamp. That helps. So yeah, play our commander. I guess we could attack first, see if there's a response. Not really planning to specialize Clement here. Can have a look at the black specialization, which makes some zombie tokens. Some fine trading for a Paradise Road if that means the opponent doesn't get to cast their commander next turn. And a Swamp on top, okay. Opponent does have the Braid, sadly. So we'll have to wait until turn 5 to replay Nalia. At least we dodged land number 6. So, still a somewhat fair fight. And then now Orator plus Initiates. And we'll pass. Also an argument for playing Mikaeus for a small amount since 
Our commander will replenish the counters pretty easily. So we can start pumping the team a little sooner. Great Henge is a very good one. Still three mana available. And yeah, next turn our team would get plus one counters and death touch. So hopefully Nalia survives. Move to combat. And then now the escort can save Nalia once it gets a counter. So not going to exert, just attacking. And that should be fine, although maybe we don't attack with Escort as they could trade for Paradise Druids. And I probably prefer to keep it around as protection. Ponon takes it. And the damage is going to add up quickly. Ponon already at 9. Gains 2 of Henge, back up to 11. And there's the Sentinel Worm at long last. Well on tap. Can play a free spell of the top first. Another one. Which is probably acceptable here. And then what to discard. Crossroads maybe. And then we can either play Mikaeus for x equals 1, we can play Lightwalker of the top, or we can go Contender plus Cartouche to give First Strike. And First Strike plus Death Touch is pretty sweet, so we can maybe put it on our commander here, so our opponent doesn't get to trade for Desert Doom. Attack with all at this point. And that's a lot of damage coming across. Could have considered exerting the initiate as well. And your opponent just takes it here too far behind. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Sir Gwyn, the equipment deck. And our hand has a changeling, which is always great. Can make a warrior, wizard, cleric. So yeah, we have a full party. Just need to hit our third land. Opponent with a turn one knights. So they might also have a small knights sub theme. So ideally, we draw a black source so we can also play connections eventually. Turn two crusader is going to help us draw. And then we probably want to play Clements as soon as possible here. And pass. Still missing black mana for connections, but next turn we could play Nalia, thanks to our base camp. Opponent's threatening to pump the knights, so I don't think we want to block with Clements. At least not yet. It will pick up a counter since we lost one more from the Crusader as well, and an acclaimed contender, so... No equipment so far, but a lot of powerful knights. And our opponent found a Midnight Reaper as well. Journey is a nice pickup, will give us some cheap interaction. And I think we need to play our commander here, just to be the most mana efficient. Or we can go with Cartouche plus, let's say, Orator. Get a wizard and a warrior down, and then next turn play Nalia, have a full party, and maybe play one mana Journey. I guess that also works. And then we can pump up Clements, so it can attack past Contender, or maybe stay back on defense to block. Which is also a possibility. Okay, yeah, let's just hang back for now. Another one mana removal spell potentially, once we find our swamp. And a cold steel heart for ramp, so next turn we could see Sir Gwyn. And a mirror shield to grant hexproof. Okay. So yeah, we can play our commander, and then see what's on top. Can play Archpriests, 
Yeah, I don't think we need to journey anything in play, so that seems fine. Got a full party, can give something flying. And that's probably going to be the automaton. Or maybe the token, since it has vigilance. And then these can all attack. Probably keep automaton back for now. Orator gains first strike death touch. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, they're just going to be incredibly far behind if they don't have some sort of sweeper. And these equipment decks typically don't. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, facing the Sentinel Worm again. Got some redundant warriors in hand, so we'll need to find one more creature type. But the curse can name the Sentinel Worm here. And prevent them from getting their commander down right away. Then turn two, probably leaning Pack Beasts. Did pick up a wizard now, so we would have a complete party if there's no interaction between our pack beast as our cleric, wizard, rogue, warrior. So turn to pack beast it is, even though it doesn't hit as hard as the initiate. It's gonna be a rhythm of the wild for haste. Okay, outcast is perfect. So now. I'm liking Initiate plus Outcasts, and then next turn, Nalia has a full party, and we can attack with a team. And this way we get in a little bit more damage, although the upside of playing our commander, of course, is that we could cast some spells of the top first and get card advantage. So, cross our fingers that there's no sweepers. Although there's usually not a ton of room for sweepers in the dragon deck between ramp and of course dragons. Although Terror of the Peaks is a scary one. Hits us for 5. And I think we still go for Nalia here. And then Smash, do we want to exert on the initiates? Our opponent's likely taking out Nalia first, so in that case I would prefer not to exert yet. And then next turn we can still replay our commander for 5 if we'd like. 6 mana available, so they cannot pay for Curse of Silence yet. It's gonna be a Desert Doom, however. Opponent going for a plus 1 counter to stay back on defense. But Terror of the Peaks hits for 5. Okay, so I think we just replay the commander here. Pump our team once again. And then now do I want to exert... Yeah, could use a life gain, otherwise there's a chance we die next turn. An attack for 13, so they could fall to 1 if they'd like. Opponent takes a trade. Alright, so gain 6, still facing a Terror of the Peaks, which can maybe take out Nalia once again. Got a Snarl coming up, so not drawing anything too exciting. It's gonna be a Dragon Kami Reborn, that's a very interesting card now. Kind of forced to attack into it to an extent, so they could cheat all sorts of dragons into play with it. Or we can keep attacking with the Changeling Outcast. Okay, opponent concedes, probably implying that they missed on the Dragon Kami Reborn, not finding any creatures, and they weren't too happy with that. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Tasha, blue-black control. So the plus one kind of counteracts our plus one counters from Nalia, so it's not going to be an easy fight. Our hand has rogues aplenty and some wizards, so not the best at completing our party. Although I do like Specialist alongside Acquisitions Experts, so I'm still going to give it a shot here. Shambling Ghast, so opponent's also playing a couple creatures at least. And then Mikaeus as a Cleric seems good. Not opposed to playing Experts turn 2. Just want to flush out some of the removal in their hands. Alright, looks like 
opponents playing quite a few creatures, Skydiver as well. So maybe not the full-on control deck I thought it was. Okay, Cohort is perfect for completing our party. So Expert can attack, I'm fine if it trades for Shambling Ghast. And then we could already run out Nalia, or we could wait until we have a full party to get those plus one counters right away. If they don't trade for Expert, then we could either Mikaeus for X equals 2, otherwise we're not using our mana very efficiently, opponent does make a treasure. Since there's no target for specialists here. So yeah, Mikaeus versus Nalia is a close call. Given that our opponent has a bunch of mana up for potential counter spells, don't really want to get Nalia countered, although we can play that 5 eventually if it does. Alright, fine. They can have it. Outcast on top is also nice to see. And an Intellect Devourer. So what do we give our opponent here? Maybe an Informant, since we kind of need the land. Yeah, that's probably one of our weaker cards. And then could play the Cohorts, and then we're still one type away from a full party. Or we could go with, let's say, Mikaeus X equals 1 plus Orator, and then between Cohort and Outcast we have a lot of ways to complete our party. Yeah, kind of like getting Mikaeus online, so we can start bumping the team with the extra counters. No attack for now. So, could already see Tasha now, with a plus one to punish any attacks. But then Mikaeus can offset them, opponent's just going after Mikaeus for two mana. Fair enough. And plays Informants. Alright, so Changeling Outcast plus Cohort, most likely our play unless we find something on the top. Guess we can play a warrior here. And this is a cleric, which would also complete our party. Sure, let's get some uh, value. And then I can play the outcast here. So that also gets pumped, and then go for the cohort. Bump the team, smash, and then this will gain flying, and I'm okay if they trade for acquisitions experts. And if they double block Nalia, is that bad? It's not great. I guess we can not attack with her. Opponent takes a trade, so now we can maybe specialist back the expert. Ooh, Crux of Fate, that's painful. So opponent wipes the board. Luckily the outcast survives, as it is technically a dragon. Okay, we gotta rebuild, but we can do so in a pretty interesting way, thanks to Specialist and Connection. And then Specialists probably go for Expert to have a look at two cards, so not quite the full hand. And take Feed the Swarm, which is an answer to connections. So this can make a shapeshifter. Still won't have a full party if we replay Nalia, as we would have a few too many rogues. But we can sacrifice Expert now. And then as Xander's Wake lets them draft a card from the spellbook, which we don't care about too much. So we can draw, I think we just go for the full three modes. And then Spellbinder is not bad to have a look. Or we can play our commander, and then I guess with Spellbinder as well, thanks to the treasure, we would have a full party. Or we can play a cleric off the top. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, full party achieved for a second time and still had a cohort to help us get there a third time. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, facing the mirror match, so it's all about getting our party going as soon as possible. Our hand has a wizard, a cleric, and an extra rogue, so still missing a warrior. I think it's probably still a keep. Especially with Glyphweaver, a way to protect our commander as well. We get to curve out, and our mana's okay. So we'll see how the opponent approached their commander deck. Coldblade as a warrior, and there's our own warrior, so we'll get that down. And then Awakener trading for Coldblade's probably fine, even though I don't really want to trade my creatures. Okay, so now can maybe play Glyphweaver before Nalia to give us a bit more insurance. And an Orator, a Wizard, so opponent's got two types as well. Thortograve also potentially quite useful. So yeah, play Glyphweaver. Send in Hallowblade. And next turn we'll have a full party, plus Glyphweaver to protect our commander. Could use a second swamp for Thortograve. Can even use Hallowblade as a discard outlet just to get some creatures in the graveyard to cast Thortograve for value. Opponent's got a powerful one here. Although it is another warrior, so not going to help them with completing their party. 2 for double strike. And there's our swamp. Alright. So I guess we can play our commander first, so we can see if there's a black or a white one drop on top we can play. Pump our team, and then probably just Hallowblade attacking. Don't really want to trade Glyphweaver for their warrior. And I'm fine discarding cards. Opponent takes it. And yeah, the advantage is just gonna keep on stacking up here. So if they don't complete their party soon, they're gonna be in trouble. They need a cheap cleric. It's gonna be a four mana wizard. Although we do have to be careful not to sacrifice our Glyphweaver now. Otherwise the opponent would get it back. And now our Thortograve is nerfed a little bit. Although we can still discard cards and then bring them back. Orator attacks with a double strike. And uh, yeah, we're not going to block it. Okay, nice one drop on top. Expert is excellent. So we can have a look see. And they've got a bunch of removal. I guess Soul Shatter's the scariest one. As that would get one of our more expensive creatures. Sure. And then play. The Bloodcaster, I think, to fly over. Pump our team. And what do we want to attack with now? Probably just Hallowblade still, and then next turn attack with the team. Since I don't really want to trade with the Resurrector in play. Even sacrificing Escort or Glyphweaver is not ideal. Their opponent's still missing their full party, but they could get lucky and find one on top. Alright, opponent moves to combat, orator gets in for four. Although could block with Nalia, make them use the practiced tactics. Doesn't seem necessary. We'll just take it. And our opponent gonna take out our commander, can save it with escorts. Untap. 
and then play some more stuff off the top. Or we could use the Hallow Blade to discard stuff and reanimate them with Thwart to Grave. Let's just play stuff off the top, keep it simple. And then we can still crack our clue token. And then now probably smash with the team. Can still sag Leafweaver if necessary. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our deck in action, and the game plan is always pretty much the same. Try and get four creature types in play. Doesn't matter too much what text some of those creatures have, as long as they have the right type, then our commander will do the rest. So another powerful commander deck brought to you by Baldur's Gate. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.